So lots to talk about in today's video. We are forming a double bottom as of now in this white range I have here. And I referenced this in our last video, uh, which if you haven't watched our videos before, you can subscribe below. Uh, this range is heavy dark pool accumulation we were seeing back in late to early November, or at least late October and early November. And this is the range between 374 and 380 uh, that has acted as a very key support as of now since we've retested it, um, as you can see here. And if you remember on the, my video on Wednesday, I talked about a potential rebound continuation, at least in the short term, for the market here, at least for SPY. And we did actually have a drawdown the following day after, but it got picked up uh, shortly after. So I remain confident with that. I do expect to see some further upside into this week. Also, if you remember right now, as of Tuesday, it starts the Santa rally period. Um, so seasonally, this time period is bullish for the stock market. And I expect some more upside here, again, at least in the short term, uh, to around like the low 390s level, um, to even closer to this retest level of this line here talked about this one in the past is the one that goes to 2020 lows connects to the June 17th low and this is a very critical pivot that I'd be very interested in seeing a retest of because of multiple things the first one yes we have a lot of support here we have a little bit more so oversold conditions and a lot of shorts are getting antsy for potential uh, downside uh, going into the new year so that's one thing um, for the potential bounce off of two the other thing over here is you can see if you draw here um, the potential of a head and shoulders pattern if we did get that retest of the line. So you have here the left shoulder on this side, we have a head over here. And then also we could form a right shoulder if we had a retest of around this low 390 to mid 390 range in the next week or two. So I'd really like to see this set up because there's potential long opportunity here for the very short term with a following short opportunity into 2023, which personally I'm bearish into the first half of 2023. So I'd like to add a short position if possible around this range, because as of now, we still are below this downward trend line that started at all time highs on January 4th of 2022. Pretty crazy to think it's almost been a year since then. And we still are under this line. So the downtrend remains and I expect this bear market to continue into the first half of 2023, like I just said. So I'd like to get a short opportunity, but again, risk reward is very important with shorts uh, because you don't want to shorten to the hole since the relief rallies can be very, very abrupt and sudden like we had back here. Uh, this knocked out a lot of shorts before continuing a lot lower uh, back during this drawdown that started in mid-August. Um, so I'd like to see something similar, maybe not as pronounced as this, but something similar of a rebound to short off of for that additional downside into 2023 that I will be able to profit off of. So that's just some of my thoughts going into right now. It seems like we started the first par portion of this down leg uh, into 2023. Um, so again, I'd like to see this uptrend going into here. And then also with that, speaking of a head and shoulders pattern, we did have a head and shoulders pattern in Tesla for the past two years. Um, it started all the way back in 2020, or at least early 2021. And now we're seeing the effects of it as we continue a lot lower from where we are right now. Massive head and shoulders that broke the neckline around 200. So we've continued down and right now it's in a falling knife formation. Uh, personally, I'm not messing with this at the moment. I'd like to see lower prices before I actually get into it. Um, and personally, as of now, it seems like it's just going to continue down because if you remember, the inverse happened back in 2021 and 2020. It was just ripping to the skies up and up and up for a long time. We saw a ton of flow on this, at least in the call side, um, continued a lot higher. And now it's doing the absolute inverse of it after this head and shoulders pattern is starting to pan out. And we saw a lot of bearish flow all of this week on Tesla. As you scroll down through here, you can see just millions upon millions of premium. And some of these super far out the money, like this one we saw on 1222, 1.4 million in premium for an 85 strike. This is far out the money and it pretty close in expiration too. Um, this one was above the ask, as you can see here in order details. So some pretty aggressive puts hitting the tape, as you can see through all of these, a 110 for the 113 expiration. And then a lot of these just have tons of premium. I have it filtered for over 1 million in premium to see kind of what the whales are doing. And it's just constant. You could just scroll through all of these uh, to see all the puts that have been added throughout the past week. And it's just a ton so far, especially in the latter half of last week. So it seems like there will be some more downside for Tesla. Maybe we have a relief bounce initially for this week. Again, this period of time is seasonally bullish. Um, so potential for that, like uh, a kind of like a relief dead cat bounce kind of thing to start off the week. But it seems as of now, it's probably going to continue a little bit lower, um, especially into 2023, because in the general market, we haven't even seen that big of a sell-off yet. We have SPY right here. 
and SPY is still well above the lows that we made back on October 13th, that CPI day. Um, so there's potential for some more even downside in SPY. So that could weigh even more on Tesla if that does end up happening in 2023. So as of now, Tesla is looking pretty bearish at the moment. I'm not touching this because again, we are super oversold. So there could be some face ripper rally days uh, to kind of like alleviate some of that oversold pressure on it. But then also I don't want to go long on it because I expect it to go lower in 2023. So this one's been uh, pretty crazy to watch as of lately um, because there's a ton of volume right now going into it, as you can see from these days, a lot of capitulation. And uh, you saw that here on TD Ameritrade, they stopped allowing margin for buying power on Tesla, which is pretty crazy that they had to do that overall. So some pretty crazy things that are happening right now in the market. And it's always a great reminder of making sure that your risk tolerance is uh, the correct amount, whatever your account's able to hold in terms of risk, just be careful, especially with these volatile conditions. Um, something speaking of risk is the VIX that I wanna talk about here. The VIX has been pretty choppy, as you can see, just consistently throughout the past year. As now we had this major volatility drawdown in the past couple months since October here, and now we're kind of stagnant around this 20 to 24 range. If we draw a trend line here, I've referenced this one in the past, it starts on November 4th of 2021. The trend line that I'm mainly watching as of now is this one, and then also if I draw the other one right here, also the one that I've referenced in the past is this one. These are the two main trend lines I'm watching. We need to be able to get above this trend line right here for there to be a substantial drawdown in the S&P 500 and then as a result, the general market. This is the main trend line that will have an impact. If we get above it in terms of volatility, then we will continue, or very likely will continue to the upside and retest the 30s again, just because in the past, this has been the trend line that has started the bounce all the way up to the 30s every single time. You could see back here, early January, over here, uh, late to early or late March to early April, and then over here in August, it started it after the retest there. So very important to get above this for any more sustained downside. And then also this trend line right here, you want to stay in between if there's going to be a relatively bearish bias in the market, because anything below is pretty much volatility kind of risking off uh, in a sense. So in between is kind of minimal risk and below is just not as much risk unless you see a pop back into this range, and especially above this level right here. So as of now, pretty stagnant around these levels. Uh, and I expect it, we'll see a bit more confirmation at least in early January to get a sense if that new down leg is confirmed, because I'd like to think as of now, this is the first leg of a multi-stage uh, down leg into 2023. But again, there are always rebounds as we saw back here after the August down leg started. Um, so I expect rebounds at least early in this next week, or to potentially even two weeks from now uh, to start up to get a good opportunity, potentially short into the market. So this is what I'm personally looking for. Um, additionally with that, the Dow Jones had a very nice bounce off its own downward trend line. You can see here it started at all time highs, very similarly to the S&P 500. And we had a nice retest after a head and shoulders pattern printed. So very critical to note the neckline of this is at 34,000. If that breaks to the upside, this head and shoulders is neglected. Uh, we'll have to see if that happens. But at the moment, it isn't a head and shoulders pattern, but it also found a support here at the downward trend line. So it's kind of in the middle of both of these. If we had a break below this downward trend line, then I'd say there's a lot more bearish bias for not only the Dow, but also the general market. But as of now, it's in the middle of it. So nothing too crazy to be looking at right now. Nothing to be too concerned about at, at the moment here. Something that is maybe concerning is the IWM. So this is for the Russell index. Um, you can see here it formed a head and shoulders again. It's had a few head and shoulders on the way down. And this is a pretty massive one that started all the way back in May of 2022. Uh, so earlier this year. So I expect this to have a substantial drawdown um, from here. It's found a support around previous COVID highs uh, from back here. So we'll see what happens, but right now it is forming a head and shoulder and we'll see once it retests this 163 level, if it's ready to go below, which will likely have a pretty substantial drawdown and will likely be around the time frame that I expect the S&P 500 to fall down in uh, 2023 for this next down leg. So this is something I'm watching too. And we also saw, if you look at the flow over here, um, some whales adding puts from the previous week um, for 1 million, as you can see here, these are more shorter dated calls uh, at the money ones for a potential relief bounce into that seasonally bullish period for the Santa rally. But for the most part in the past couple of weeks, we've seen a lot of puts uh, being added for the more long term. So we'll continue to watch it. Not too much from last week, but again, in earlier December, we were seeing a lot more puts uh, hitting the tape. And the last thing I do want to talk about here is the dark pool levels. Uh, we didn't see too much premium as of last week. We saw 1.1 billion at the 380 level. Again, over 1 billion is good to see, but considering most of November and early December, we saw a lot 
over 3 billion. It's not anything crazy to see over 1 billion. 2.9 billion is a decent amount at this 386 level uh, to watch for. If we go back here to Wednesday, you can see here it was 1 billion for singular dark pool prints. So these are not the same as signature. The signatures amounted for 1.9 billion. So again, this is just a medium amount. It's not like we're only hitting 800 million or 700 million. We're still in the billions, uh, but again, nothing too crazy at the moment. So it's more so medium term uh, waiting for confirmation. So I'd like to see a rebound, like I said, uh, for this week to potentially get closer to a head and shoulders pattern where I could reevaluate and see if there's a good short setup uh, in the future. But other than that, though, appreciate you guys watching this video and I'll see you guys next time.